Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we're going to be putting the smallest star ever discovered into the solar system. So this should be pretty interesting so hopefully you guys are all having a great day and hopefully you enjoy the video. So yeah this is going to be pretty cool. So if you um, actually saw last um, last episode we um, added some more custom objects in so yeah if you didn't see that video I recommend you, recommend you go check it out because yeah you guys really enjoy those so if you haven't seen it definitely recommend it. So yeah, we made the smallest star in or ever found, and we added it into the game. So if you didn't know, this star is actually smaller than Saturn. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit smaller by a few hundred kilometers, but it is smaller than Saturn. So that is that is pretty crazy, but it does exist. So yeah, here's that. And also, guys, um, as mentioned um, last episode, we, I am going to be starting the new custom solar system series soon on all of the custom objects here so it's going to be a it's going to be a long ride because it's definitely not going to be done in one video because there's so many objects to add in here so if you guys um if you want me to make any custom objects for you guys like maybe i could add your like make a planet and put your name on it or something just let me know um what you want me to do with an object what color um if you want it a gas giant or not and yeah, I'll make it for you, and then we can include it in the um, custom object solar system coming up, because that would be pretty interesting. And if you guys already commented your ideas on the previous video, don't worry about commenting them on today's video, because um, those comments, um, I, I'm going to go back to those, so don't worry. But anyways, let's go do this. So, oh, damn it, whoops. <laughs> so, yeah, the smallest star, so EBLM J0555 slash 57 AB. This is the smallest star, and just look how cute it is. It's so small. <laughs> Look at this thing. So it's got 85 Jupiters in mass. It's just a tiny little smaller in Saturn than radius. Yeah, this guy is very small. So if we just do the um, grid here. Look at that grid. <laughs> how small that is. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and drag it just inside the sun. So it's in the center of the system, like so. Then we're going to delete the sun. So now it's just this guy left. Then we're going to go tools, more, and then auto orbit. So now all the objects will hopefully orbit around this, because I don't know if Jupiter and Saturn will orbit this, because they may just try and do their own thing. So, here is the smallest star. So before we hit play, let's just go to Earth and look in the sky. Let's see how small it... Oh my... It's completely pitch black here. It is completely dark. That is how dim this star is. So if we just go and land... Um... Oh, here's the UK. So we'll land in the UK. So... Oh, we actually are in the UK. Cool. Okay. So... Where is the star? Oh, there it is. So it's literally just like any other star in the night sky, except it's a lot redder since it's closer so we can see its color easier. But there it is. So, damn, that is so small. And remember, this thing is smaller than Trappist-1. Like, this is the smallest star ever discovered as a custom object since this isn't in the game. So, by radius, Jupiter and Saturn actually dwarf, or, uh, not dwarf it, but they make it look very, very small. See, there's um, Uranus. We're in the custom system today. So we've got Uranus, Neptune, and Planet 9, of course, which is cool. And we've just we've got all the normal planets there. So, yeah, just look how small this star is. And if we just compare it to Saturn, Saturn, there's its radius there. So it's 58,579. And then this star is 57,800. So that's the closest I could get it. Because there was no... I, from the research I did, I couldn't actually find its radius. Nor its luminosity. So we just have to roll with what we've got. Because I literally could not find its luminosity anywhere. So that kind of sucks. But yeah, this is the closest we can do to the, what would happen in the real scenario. So hopefully you enjoy it nonetheless. So let's um, slow down time. And let's prepare to hit the play button. Because this is going to be interesting. So we're doing it to about five minutes. So we'll put um, trails and labels back on. So there's that. Actually, before we start, actually, let's just go to Neptune. Let's go to Neptune. So yeah, my favorite planet. Let's see how big the star is from here. So, we don't need to land on the surface, but we just turn that off. You can barely see it. <laughs> oh, my God. So, if we just um, go on the top cloud layers of Neptune here. So, if we look. Where even is it now? <laughs> um, okay, there it is. So, it's right there. So, you can see the little white circle around it. That is it. It is smaller than some of the stars in the background here. Like, you can see that white star. If you look carefully, that bright white one, just a little to the right of the galaxy there. You can see that white star. I know you can't see it from my cursor. It's a little left of this, um, a little left of the main star here. You can see it there. Like these stars are actually appearing bigger than the star in the system. That is, that is, that is really crazy. This thing is so small. And then, and then um, we'll go and just check it out from Planet Nine because why not? <laughs> so let's go all the way out here. 
It's a good old planet. I've not seen this guy in a while, so yeah, hello again. So, where even is it? Can I even spot it? Would I be able to spot it? I really can't see anything here. Little red star. Any Anything? Yep, can't, I cannot see it. Where is it? Actually, you know what? It should be here somewhere. I'm trying to use my cursor to try and find it. Anyone? Hello? Okay, it's gone labels. So there's Planet 9. Wait, where is it? That's a completely different spot. Oh, it's over there. Okay, so... If we just turn that off. It is... That is so dim, but you can just see it there. Click on the little white circle. Wow, that is... That is amazingly small. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit play so we can actually see what's going on here. So the temperature on all of the planets. Let's go to Mercury, actually. Does this receive any sunlight? Oh, look how dark it is. This is like how dark Iris usually is from our sun. Look at this. This is in this is ridiculous. <laughs> well, that is insane. Actually, since um, we're in a dark theme, let's just put it on just stars and make it look really dark. So, look how dark Mercury is. And the temperature here is definitely going to drop to minus. Um, Venus, the temperature or the temperature here is going to drop. But does this receive any sunlight? Oh wow, it literally, it does barely. If we just um, turn it off. Yeah, it is. There is a little bit of light there. You can see it's slightly red on this side, but if you look this side, it isn't. So, Venus is barely receiving anything. Literally nothing. And then Earth, I'm guessing, doesn't, as we already saw. Yeah, we already saw this. So, that is ridiculously small. Okay, so now let's actually speed this up. I want to see if Jupiter and Saturn just go off and do their own thing. Because they may. Like, they, they may. So, let's check on orbits. Yeah, look. So Jupiter is now in a binary orbit with this star because it's only got 85 Jupiter masses. Like this is a very, very low amount of mass for a star, which is pretty crazy stuff. So, okay, so all the objects are still orbiting though. Okay, that's good. So at least they haven't just completely drifted off. Okay, so let's see. Let's let time pass and then let's see the temperature and all the planets drops. You see Earth is already at minus 40. Venus is at minus 182. So Venus is very cold as well. Mars is still already cold. The gas giants are obviously cold. Minus 170. It's getting colder at Jupiter. Obviously, the um, dwarf planets and the little asteroids in the uh, asteroid belt here, they're, get, they're already cold. Ceres here, one, minus 169 and increasing. These probably will go to minus 270. Like, <laughs> they're not getting any light. Maybe maybe not Mercury. But even Venus, even though Venus is receiving light, it's not receiving anything. So its greenhouse effect will not have really anything. You can see the greenhouse effect. 67. That's quite high for an object in this game. But... It's not going to help out here when it's barely receiving any light anyway. The greenhouse won't work if there's no sunlight going to it. So, yeah, that's going to suck. But even so, since it is a greenhouse, the heat isn't meant to escape. So, in reality, if this happened, I reckon Venus probably would lose its temperature, but not straight away. Like, is that like what do you guys think? Let, let me know in the comments what you think. Like, do you think Venus would just lose its temperature very quickly? Or do you think it would lose it a lot slower? Because it is a greenhouse. Greenhouses aren't, like, the whole point of a greenhouse is to keep your plants warm and stuff like that. Even when it's not sunny, because it, it, it absorbs the sunlight. The sunlight gets in, but there's no way for the heat to get out. So, Venus should probably keep its heat for a while before it goes down. It'd probably take hundreds of years, maybe? But that's just a rough estimate. I don't know for sure, but if I'm wrong, then let me know. But if I'm right, just tell me you agree with me. Like, it's interesting. Like, do you think it would just get cold really quick or would it survive with a bit of temperature for a bit i think it would survive for a temperature but it definitely would cool down eventually anyways let's see what's going on here so yeah minus 250 on jupiter and still getting colder wow that's crazy how's uranus doing minus 242 how is it warmer here than it is on jupiter that's, that doesn't make sense yeah jupiter's colder than uranus uranus is meant to be the coldest planet in the solar system i don't know what's up with that so it reflects 30% of the light. Jupiter reflects 34. Yeah, this should this should be way colder. How's how's good old Neptune doing? Let's check up on you. Minus 245. Ooh. And you can see the system's wobbling as well. Because this star hasn't got much gravity like because it's very low in mass, its gravity is going to be weaker. So Jupiter, because it's in a binary orbit with the star now, is actually helping now in wobbling the system here. Because yeah, these are probably quite unstable orbits now. With all these objects, especially with the gas giants, probably Saturn's contribution as well to that. Not, not good. Well, that's pretty crazy. How much mass is? Okay, so Saturn's 0.2 Jupiter. So yeah, Saturn's not nearly enough mass to really cause the damage. It's mainly Jupiter and the star are probably doing this. So pretty crazy. I forgot how much like flares and stuff is shooting out. Let's go check up on this. Look at this guy. Look at this. 
All these flares. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. This. Yeah, if you make objects really small, they do sometimes do this. It's pretty, pretty cool. But look at all the little, like, shoot, all, all the flares and stuff it's shooting out. It's, it's pretty cool. I wish the big stars did that. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool if we could have, like, UI Scutty doing this. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, so Mercury, how are you doing? Minus 226. Venus is minus 182. So you can see it is still the hottest planet in the solar system because it is getting that little bit of sunlight, which is sort of helping it stay a little warmer than the other objects. But poor old Earth isn't receiving any light at all. So it's going to stay in that minus 200 mark. But it looks like it does warm up. So it probably gets a little closer to the star at some point, then it cools down again. But still, it's very, very cold here. How are all the lights still here? <laughs> Yeah, there's that. So Earth is completely frozen. Actually, one thing they need to add to the game, actually, is city lights for planets. Because there used to be a glitch where you could do it. Where you could get city lights on any random planet. But you can't do it anymore. They need to add a feature where it adds random lights to planets. Because that would really make things cool. Like, I really wish I could do that to some of my custom planets here. Especially, like, um, where is it? This one here, for instance, maybe. Um, where's Pascal? That's my custom Earth. Where's that? Pascal, yeah, so, yeah, Pascal's here. I wish it, I wish I could add city lights to that, because that would be really cool. And also, the one thing I want the most, though, is coloured gas giants. I want to be able to change the colour of my gas giants, because we could have some really, really cool colours um, for gas giants, but we just can't do it, which is really annoying, so we have to just deal with the ones we have. But I do have a good lineup of, rat or like, all all coloured ones. Like, we've got Planet Nine all in blue. We've got, obviously, a, a grey one, a white one. We've got um, this one here, the light blue one, which we use for the custom Uranus. Like we have, and we've got orange as well, like 51 Pegasi there, Bespin, we've also got a brown one, like, these are cool to have, but once they add the, or once they add, or hopefully once they add it, the um, power to change gas giants, these objects will just won't be rare anymore, which will kind of suck, but we'll definitely keep them, we won't get rid of them. Anyways, let's see anything else, so it looks like the system is all staying in one piece though, it may be a little wobbly, but it's still staying all in one piece, which is good. But it just looks like the system will forever be cold now because a star like this, this thing will take literally forever to burn out its hydrogen supply. Because if you didn't know, red dwarf stars, which is what this is, because I don't, yeah, this isn't a brown dwarf, this is a red dwarf. So stars like this, these take so, so, so long to use all of their hydrogen fuel because they're so, because they're, because they're colder and they, like, they burn or they, they do their fusion process less, I believe. They have a, their hydrogen supply lasts a lot longer. So stars like this obviously will never turn into red giants. They probably will maybe maybe get a little bigger once they start burning, burning helium. But there's no way this will supernova. It'll probably just slowly get smaller and smaller till it turns to a... Um, I believe it's a blue dwarf red... I think red dwarfs turn into stars, blue dwarf stars. I think only red dwarfs can do that. But the problem is we can't confirm this because red dwarfs, because they live for so long... No red dwarf that exists in the universe has died yet. Because these things last literally forever. Not, it's not like a yellow dwarf or like our sun where it will last for a few billion years. Or like for about 14 billion years or something like that. These things will probably last for over triple that lifetime. So the universe hasn't, isn't old enough for any, of, any red dwarfs to have died yet. So we don't actually know for sure what happens when these run out of hydrogen. But they probably will just turn into like a small white dwarf or, or like what they think is a, a little blue dwarf. It's going to be interesting, but we literally do not know what happens when one of, the, one of these stars dies because it's never happened. It's pretty cool stuff there. Interesting fact if you didn't know. Anyways, I think that does it for this episode, guys, because not much has happened. Like if we just go and um, check out all the objects here, they're all very, very cold, like... Jupiter, minus 259, Saturn, minus 260, Uranus, minus 258, minus 256 at Neptune, Planet 9 is 265, and we've got Earth, minus 158, Venus is the hottest, actually, you know, no, Venus isn't the hottest anymore, minus 157 at Earth, Mars is two, minus 247, Mercury is minus 226, so Earth is the warmest planet in the solar system, apparently, interesting, that's, that's pretty peculiar, actually, but I don't, in reality, I don't think that would happen. Venus still gets sunlight. Earth doesn't. The greenhouse effect on Venus should still work. Even though it's receiving a little bit of, or like, very, very little light. It's still getting light. So, some of that heat should get a little trapped in Venus. So, interesting stuff. Yeah, if you guys agree with me on, like, if Venus would keep its heat for a bit before it cooled down, or it would cool down very slowly, then let me know. But if you think it would just cool down straight away, then also let me know. Let's see if we can get a little discussion going. 
But anyways, yeah, there's that. And then obviously the dwarf planets, these guys are already cold. So, yeah, you know how hot they'd be. Like, make, make, Sedna here. Good old Sedna, minus 261. And Mercury, yeah. yeah. So, all very, very cold. So, to conclude, if the smallest star was our sun, life as we know it probably wouldn't be able to exist. There's no way us humans would be able to live on minus 165 permanently in complete darkness. There's just probably no way, like... Um, livestock and plants would probably wouldn't be able to survive here. The only way we'd survive is if we'd be able to adapt our bodies very quickly to this, but um, evolution isn't a very quick process, so if this wouldn't, we would not be able to survive around this star if it just suddenly, if our sun suddenly turns into this. So yeah, there we go. So hopefully you guys all enjoyed this video. Make sure you did hit that like button, subscribe for more. If you've got any ideas for video, then let me know down below. And also, like I said at the start of the video, if you've got any Pacific custom objects that you guys want me to make you like and you want me to put your name on it then just let me know what object you want how big you want it and all that and what color and stuff and yeah i'll make it for you in an upcoming video as a preparation video for the custom so or the custom object solar system so the only objects you're allowed to use are ones in this tab here so these guys so it should be an interesting hopefully you guys will enjoy that but anyways that does it for the video so i'll see you in the next video goodbye